Yes, confirmation that you are seeing my screen. Okay, thank you. So, I have created a small uh, Python module. It's just simply uh, just return a, a one function that just say a there. So I'm just going to show you how we can uh, package this one to be a Python package and deploy it to the internet. So uh, anyone can start to do so. So after you have created your Python module, the, to make sure uh, it's, it's going to be uh, a Python package, you have to create this file underscore init underscore double underscore dot file. This file is necessary for packaging for Python packaging. So after you created that, whatever the, the module that you want to include in your package, you have to uh, specify that on the init.py file, which you also can see this is a small project, but the stream that has all the same structure when it comes to how they do the packaging. If you go to the init, you can see according every module on that init.py. So the, the thing that you have to do is simple. So I have this function. I want to uh, transfer this whole code that print a hello world or you can make it a calculator, whatever the function of the module, it doesn't matter. So you have to just initialize it like this. So I'm just saying uh, from the main, I want to import the hello function. So whoever installed my package can import from whatever my package name is, then they can import the hello function and use it for their advantage. So, to the project. so after you have done uh, this, is then you put the init part you have done with this. Uh, the next step would be if you have a readme, put a well, this is just a simple readme, but for a formal package, you should have a formal written package, uh, readme because whatever you're written in this will also be. Uh, on the published package instruction. So if you have instruction, how one can use your package, write that on the readme. So when you install it, when you upload it to the PY, PY Python packaging website, it would be displayed in a formal professional way. Uh, the other would, that would be necessary would be the setup the PY file. This is where you set up the, any information about the package. For example, here, I have put the name of the package. Let me just change it here. Maybe let's say hello test. I want my packaging to be this one, the version. Since I'm uh, gonna upload it for the first time, I want to start from version one. When I reinstall it again, I can, you know, I have to change the version name on the my setup the PY file. Now I'm we're just gonna deploy the version one. Uh, so you have to just make sure this configuration is right. You can add more configuration, which I'm just gonna give you for you guys to figure to see or to figure out. So if you want to add uh, the package to output your uh, whatever the function is on your console, you can add this kind of format. There are a different formats that you can put on your setup uh, depending on your preference and the purpose of the package. But for this simple package, we don't need this. And if there's any package that you are using uh, on the, your both main PY or on your functionality, make sure that also added on your setup. Uh, since I only have simple functions that print something, I don't use any pa package. But if I use, for example, pandas or numpy, any package to do my functionalities here, I have to add them on my setup.py. So whoever is when someone install your package, automatically this package will also be installed on the system. So they can access your package functionality with no error. So since I don't have one, it will be empty. Um, my author name, description of the package, what else is there? Uh, I'm telling you here to read the readme file, uh, the readme notes that I put on my package, so it will be the readme, all the readmes will be deployed on your publishing site. Uh, I'm just this, uh, referring the type of the description. I'm saying it should be a markdown format uh, with the readme is written. Okay, sorry. Um, after you have done your this configuration, 
there are important tools you have to install. The first one would be the setup tools. The other would be the wheel tool, and this is the twine tool. The twine tool is a package that will help you to upload your package to the PYD, to the Python Python website, which is py, py. Let me just show you this one here. Um, this one, py.py is where all Python packages are found. So you have, you need to have an account here. Just sign up on this py or website and sign up. There is authentication you must uh, finish uh, to verification process when you register. So make sure everything is finalized when you, for, let me just show you here, for example, You see here, I have I have finished my recovery method. You have to finish that we, to factor authentication. Like any of your Gmail uh, accounts have this kind of security mechanism. You have to finalize everything to be able to accept uh, new uploads on the Python Packet website. So after you've done that, uh, you can have the option to create API token, which you need when you upload uh, your package on this website. So you have to come to add the API token, just give it a name, select the scope. I'm just gonna choose the entire project. Uh, so I'm creating, the name could be anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, so just create token. So we this token, we need it for, when we upload the system. So anyway, just make sure you have you have an account here to be able to upload your Python package. And make sure you finished everything, the verification process. So uh, since I already installed this package, I'm not going to, but you should. And then after that, you need to build your work, your package, your entire package work. So you just a picture and I just put two folders will be created for my package before I upload, which contain the necessary, necessary information about the modules, everything that I set up right now. So once I have done that, the next step would be to install this package, this first one. Under this file, the first file with uh, the extension in the .whl, you have to install that one. So let's just wrap that in here. And do Why is it showing an error? Okay, I, I missed the folder. I have to indicate the folder and it's found on the list folder. Then install. Once you install that, the last step would be uh, to upload it to the UI website. That is the last step. 
So I just paste this one. It will ask me my token, which I created here. Let's just copy this one and go back here. Just paste the token. Okay, now, now let's just read. Just need some bit of internet connection. Uh, but other than that, the process is simple. The only thing that you have to just make sure everything works up after installation the package will be right the right configuration of the setup part. Um, if you have license information here you want to add on your package, you should do that. You can add a license. Take the file, which is just indicating that you are the owner of the package. Any license formal tickets, you can add that. If you need, uh, well, in, in professional level, you probably need a license information for your package. How you write your configuration should differ from person to person. You can make it as secure as you want. There's no limitation. This is just the simplest way. Taking too much time. If you have questions, maybe until that is one finish, then go ahead and ask. Yeah. Hi, hi, Rehmet. Uh, hi. Sorry, but uh, I didn't get the idea of uh, of what you did. Uh, what is what is this exactly? Sorry. This is not necessary for this week project. It's, an, it's just an additional knowledge to show you how you can do Python package. You don't have to worry about it. This is not for the challenge at all. Okay. Thank you. It's just someone asked oh, this. Is... I'm just trying to show you how you can do that. How you can deliver a PY? Yeah, you see, you can install pip, install pandas, stuff like that. You have seen that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just showing you how how developer done that. So maybe someday when you create your own Python package, how you can deploy it, and other people can use your work. By just saying pip install whatever the name that you give for your package. In this case, we gave it hello dot uh, underscore test. That is my package name. So after I published it, any of you can just copy uh, just pip install hello underscore test and access any of the functionalities that I put on my module. You got that right, Joseph? Okay. It's just an additional knowledge. You don't have to worry about it for this week project. Okay, go ahead. Um, just a question. You said, what did you say that the pypi.org does? Does it is it is that where we create your own package or where you install no. it? Yeah, that website is the official Python website where all the Python packages are found. It says it's just a yeah, it's just the Python official website where all of the packets that you are using now, which you haven't used before, also are found. Pandas, NumPy, which is, they are found for in that website. We're just going to grab them from there. And maybe let me just show you here. Before this, let's take one the Pandas package or the NumPy package. As long as the Python package, you can access it from this website. So we're trying to create our own package and make sure it's deployed in this official website of Python so anyone can access it. Okay, Sheila, is that clear? Yeah, it's clear, thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, does this mean anyone can uh, make a package and put it in this website? 
Yes, anyone can make a package and put it to website. Okay. But so, but you have to. I'm just showing you here for uh, educational purpose. But I'm gonna remove every of the package that I just created because you should have a formally well written package on the website. But by default, PY PY website doesn't have a standard of what your package should include. You can simply uh, deploy your package simply, and access, anyone can access it. Okay, I think that in that I just gave it is taken by some meeting. So let's just take this one and uh, it. We are taking much time from internet. Sorry, Let's just repeat the step one more time. to the link is that just py py to find your deployed package very first now anyone can just copy it and paste it on the new stock general system and access the function the hello function they can import in do whatever they want so this is how python packaging works in short so for testing purpose, py has a testing uh, URL, so you can access that if you are interested on this topic more. Uh, just install instead of installing in the formal, uh, like I did now. I mean, these are all fake package, and just not necessary to put it on the internet. So hope that is clear. Is it just a reaction? And I'm just gonna start with the presentation. Kajabi. Okay, so I'm just uh, asking about the. Uh, I think packaging is one form of uh, modularizing uh, mo modularizing our code. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what if if we do it just on our local machine? Uh, what I mean is that if we don't put it on the uh, Python packaging, but only to modularize our code and so that we can work on. Uh, uh, maybe packaging our code uh, so that it will be clear for others, not necessarily posting it on the. Uh, so, like, the you, there is a uh, just go to on the documentation, there is a testing URL that they give you, it's just for you. So, you can use that to upload your package and to do the packaging. You don't have to do it like I did. There is a testing, way, uh, a testing uh, URL to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe another question is that how uh, how do you decide uh, uh, when to package? What I mean is that how do you um, how do you decide where where to cut your code and package it? As long as your project is doing what it's supposed to do, you can. I mean, that is enough uh, reason to make it a package. And um, for example, for mine, the Hello World is working, right? It's printing something. So it's my target is for that project is to only do that. I have a good reason to put it on packaging. So if your packaging has made you the purpose, then you are ready to 
do uh, to make it into a Python package and make it reusable for everyone. So I'm just gonna stop my recording and in Kenan. Okay, Hilary, go ahead. Okay. Uh, for for the packaging, do can we like um, automate the process if in GitHub Actions? Yes, actually that is the better one. So every time there is some changes on your uh, code, automatically the GitHub will upload the new version to the UI. That is actually the the right way to do this, not from your local machine like I did it. Okay, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, Imtanan, you can take over. Sorry for taking too much time. Uh, it's okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, right. So today we're going to cover a little bit to how to use um, um, SQL and Postgres with uh, with Python and SQL Alchemy in particular. So uh, I suppose like uh, a lot of you have already done this, but we are going to just uh, go over it a little bit just to like if anyone has questions or like uh, has face problems. Let me just share my screen. One second. Uh, OK. Um, all right, so uh, this is just like I think a lot of you already saw this. So this is how to access the data you had already. Like, um, so the data is given to you in, in the form of like an SQL file, which is like a, um, a dump database, and you can just restore it. Uh, you start by um, installing Postgres, and like you have, um, you have like any kind of install install Postgres directly or uh, through through Docker, uh, and then um, uh, okay. So this is like a, like next you have to have these um, uh, libraries. This is for like using the data inside with with Python. But the first step is just to restore, basically create the database. So the same is just like in, in Postgres, create a database and then just like uh, um, start from the file that you had. Like, uh, so this is like um, supposed to be simple, supposed to be able to run this. Once you do that, you will have your data inside uh, a Postgres database. You'll have a table called XDR data. And that from that, you can like, um, basically read it inside a Python data, um, sorry, a Python script or like a, a notebook. Uh, sorry, one second. So yeah, let's do this. Uh, so here like, yeah, so the database and, um, and the table, these are like the default connection parameters, but because they could be different, like the port, um, Usually these are like uh, like that, but like it could be different. Uh, what else? Yeah, it's supposed to be like something simple. But okay, just before we go uh, to like using it in Python, have anyone like uh, do you have questions about how to do these steps? Just restore like um, database itself. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so uh, yeah, apparently I've been able to uh, install Postgres on my on my system. Mm -hmm. However, I'm trying to follow that process in order to create uh, the database. Yeah, no, it has not been forthcoming. I've not been able to do that. If it is something you could, you know, run through in this uh, call, I would appreciate. Yeah. So, which uh, which system you are using? Which OS are you using? macOS macOS all right so i have no um experience with that but um so do you like uh, do you want to just the steps to to do that or like um, 
you want me to do the steps or you you have you have a particular error you're facing that you want to yes i have a particular error i'm facing because initially if i run the uh sudo mm -hmm. uh that first uh code the error i'm getting i'm coming the mm -hmm. error no i'm actually not getting an error for that right so whenever i know it's now telling me that uh the default interactive shell is now z uh, zsh to update your account to use zsh is asking me to run a particular command and i think after running that command it's just giving me error i i typed psql is saying the command is not found i mean so that's basically i'm stopped Okay, tell you what, uh, it's better to like, because I'm not exactly following, uh, just you saying it like that. So maybe um, if you haven't done this already, uh, take a screenshot of the error you're getting and send it on Slack and let's try to solve it there. Um, but like, con okay, otherwise um, it would be easier to deal with it right there, basically. And um, uh, Okay, um, it's like, but I think conceptually it, it's it's simple. So I suppose like there are no questions over this. Um, yeah, so yeah, so the, the step of like Postgres, this is just like a, if you install Postgres, this is how you like get to use, like a, switch the user to the Postgres user. And then, like, you can run the Postgres command there. And from there, like, uh, here is the step we're just creating an empty database. And then, like, uh, basically um, going back to, like, the, the file we have. And then, like, basically, yeah, filling the, the database from, with, from this file, which is, like, has a schema and the data inside of it, basically. And um, yeah, so I suppose, yeah, any error like you're going to be facing, it's better to like um, share uh, on Slack, uh, like a screenshot of the error you're having, and then like we can work from there. Um, it's easier to do that. So just to be a bit more, maybe, um, I think it's uh, simple enough, but let's see uh, the code. Uh, yeah, we can on oh, collab. Okay, haven't done that, uh, Mikias. Haven't like man uh, done this uh, connect uh, Postgres in collab. Um. Yeah, and I don't know. How does it go about to do that, really? Uh, Thing. because you'll have Postgres locally and then club is like have access only to your uh, G drive files so um, maybe if someone else knows like if this is possible to do or like maybe the way to do that is going to be just you have to um, Connect just locally, create the CSV file from the from the data, and then use upload that to your G drive to to access the data from there. But I I don't know, uh, yeah, I don't know if there is a way to actually connect your local Postgres to Collab. I just wanted to, yeah. So sorry, Mikis. Um, maybe um, also put that question maybe on the Slack. Maybe someone else will have like find a, um, an answer for that. I don't know. Uh, for now, I will show you just um, very shortly. Well, just an example. Example, really, it's just because this is really there's not much to this. I'm going to show you like a like like a, a kind of um, um a modular code, let's say, in how to access. Uh, or how to get read and write to your database from Python. And um, so I should have an example here. Um, so you can see my screen. Um, right. 
So, so you can see. Um, so I have a notebook here. Um, sorry, it's loading. Um, should have had it open before. Um, So yeah. So here are like uh, let's say materialized code to how to connect. So I'm using SQL Alchemy to connect to uh, my database, and like um, I created a class called database. I mean, you can do this in different ways. You can use um, the other like. Uh, there are like a, maybe a couple of ways to do this, but um, um, no, not meaning that the structure actually, but just like uh, how to actually create the connection and um, how to read and write uh, from the database. But here I'm using Pandas and SQL Alchemy. I have this data, database class, which will take like uh, parameters of the database, so database name, password, host, and port. And um, then like uh, create an URI, for, uh, like a um, string. And then use the create engine from SQL Alchemy to, to, uh, to do to like create this connection to the database. And basically, because Pandas has these very convenient uh, functions, you can read uh, a table from the Postgres database directly into a data frame. And you can also write a, a pandas data frame to a table in the Postgres database. And you can also do, do this in like, um, uh, pay attention to like, if you want it to be, to add it like the, if the table already exists in the database, you can replace it with a new one, or like you can append to it if you want. Uh, of course, there is also like a, the, you can create functionalities to delete a table if you want. Like if these are all like um, all kind of functions you can you will need. And uh, yeah, of course, I can. Uh, the idea is that. Um, uh, I will use this, so the database connection.
Hello? Can you hear me? Am I the only one? I can't hear anything. Oh, you're not the only one. Yeah. Can't hear anything as well. I think they have need to over there. Hello? 
Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I apologize. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry. We, I lost, uh, there was a sudden power cut and I lost connection. So, um, I was trying to show like, uh, well, I don't know if you have like, so like the code already or not. Uh, do you want me to like uh, show the code again or do you have other questions maybe? Um, because like, um, I, I, it's, uh, yes, Sheila. Um, I have a question. So yeah. I managed to, I managed to, um, create a database, but I didn't do it using the codes. I created a database um, manually using PG admin. And I was able to import my data, to import the data from, yeah, to import the data using um, my command prompt to my, the new database I had created. Is there a problem yeah. with that? No, there are no problems. That's very good. As long as you, you end up with a database, that's, that's what's, um, what's uh, like, well, that was the, the goal. Yes, of course, you can use uh, PD admin to do that as well. Um, uh so yeah the guy didn't show that okay uh just for the sake of completing what i was doing uh let me try to share my screen i hope i will not lose connection this time again i apologize um let me share share my screen um Uh, so the, the screen is coming so yeah so this is the code i was looking at now it's just on github and uh as you can see like as i showed you earlier there was like um um a, a, like a class database uh, um, defined in this uh, file here uh, this one and um what else i defined like uh, my connection parameters in like a json file that is uh, hidden basically so i i don't want to share this secret on github and uh, so and uh, yeah like basically after connecting the database, I'm going to just use the function read table to the app to read the data and I can get the data here. So uh, of course this data, I can basically write to CSV file from here, but uh, the goal of using a database you have is that like you can continue using it after like once you do the cleaning, or if you do like some kind of feature selection or uh, dimensional reduction, whatever you do with the data, you can store back on in the database itself, uh, like uh, using just uh, to SQL uh, the functionality in in pandas. Um, yeah, so that's the main goal of using this. So um, I think it's it's simple Sorry, enough. Sorry, could you repeat the main goal? Sorry? Using the database. Could yeah, you repeat so, the main goal of using? Yeah, so the, the idea here in this challenge is that you continue using the database instead of like, of course, you could have like stored your data in a CSV file or another kind of um, storage uh, from here on. Like you bought the data out of from this database, but you can store like the rest of it in any kind of data storage. But the idea here.
in modeling, you can store the data into back into the database, like create a new table, basically. Uh, which is simple enough with, if you are using pandas, you can just, from your data frame, you can just like write to into a table directly in, in the database itself. Um, so this is like uh, what's expected from you to do this week. Um, so any other questions? Um, like I suppose for, for this, uh, for this part, uh, people are facing errors, specific errors, and maybe like, this is not the best format to address those Slack is better. Uh, but anyone who I have any question or like a suggestion, uh, you're welcome to have a, a few minutes. Yeah, I, I have been able to solve the problem. If anyone is, if anyone else is having the same okay. issue, I think we have posted it on the Nana support, so you can follow that step and be able to solve it. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, thank you. Um, anything else? Anyone else? Um. Okay, otherwise, uh, if there are no com further questions, I suppose that we can end the session and like we'll continue discussions or like questions on Slack. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for your patience and I'm sorry again. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, what I did, um, okay, so there are two things that I did. So you got, um, first I got the data from the uh, Telecom SQL uh, file. Uh, she's like a database dump. I, I got that data into a post, in my, in my local Postgres database is the first step. The second step is that from that database, now I can extra extract this data into a Python code or into my notebook. And uh, I basically, I wrote uh, code to read from the database and write to, to the database, basically. Um, like I showed you like a, a modular code basically to like uh, to, to do that. But I mean, there are, uh, you can approach as you think is suitable. Uh, but this is the basic idea. So this is just like how to handle the data mainly. Is that clear? Oh. Great. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, um, we can end the session here. Um, can stop the recording. And I apologize again for the for the technical <laughs> for the interruption. Okay. Have a nice evening and um, good luck. Okay. Bye.